that time we actually started, we could uh, see. Back in business then. On to the next item, which is prayer at board meetings. Dr. Boyles. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. One of your members asked that this be put on uh, the agenda for this evening for next. I asked that this be put on the agenda for tonight and uh, I went ahead and asked that the attorneys prepare a summary related to the town of Greece versus Callaway decision that happened uh, back in May. And so you have had that from uh, Jonathan Blumberg and, and Steve Austin. Um, I would just point out a couple of things to you that are the points that, that I took from this uh, summary that they gave you of the legal precedents. There, there still is not a clear answer on this issue. This was a city council. Uh, you are not a city council. I think the issues that, um, as a board, you need to, to be aware of really are on the uh, in section <coughs> three, uh, really at the top of the page there, I believe, uh, where it talks about uh, if you want to the next top of the next page. Uh, prayers must be conducted in ceremony, part of the meeting, not during public business. There's a the body may participate. But attendees should not be uh, compelled to do that. Um, you can invite community members to give a prayer. Uh, but the, the um, town of Greece case seems to give boards the latitude not to go way out of the way to get a representation of all faiths and all denominations and all beliefs. Um, the, um, Prayer certainly don't need to be generic or non-sectarian. Some cases have been where some legislative bodies in some states have developed um, required or model language that would be required. That's not the case here. Um, but uh, in all, it needs to be handled in a non-discriminatory fashion. I think the important part for you is to find there in that paragraph. Um, if all are mostly all attendees are adults, there's less concern and coercion, but the presence of many children may create heightened concerns. And that certainly is a consideration for you as a board. Um, as you discuss this, you do have students who attend each meeting. The time that this would be uh, included in your meeting would be at the time when those students are present. And so that's something that, that you need to consider. All of the, your decisions or your, your practice on prayer at board meetings predates me. I don't know if that was a conscious decision that was made by the board at the time of merger or thereafter or it's something that happened. I don't know how that happened, so I don't have that frame of reference. I've not found anything in your policies that would lead me to understand that. But I think those points, um, absence of coercion, you need to be at least somewhat uh, you know, understanding that um, it's not a regulated prayer in the sense that you would have specific language, you would have certainly the opportunity to have community participation and the concern about students. With that, I'll stop. You, you have the document to read. Uh, and I'll have you off to discuss it with you. you. I would say, too, uh, you just need to give the administration some direction. If this is the direction that you would want to go, then the, the superintendent staff would need to look at policy policy language, make sure it's consistent with what you're doing. Or is open for comments. Of course, I'm um, very interested into this, I mean, this topic. <laughs> I did recommend it and I thought a lot about it. And um, I do think that it does give us a latitude. We gotta be strategic about how we apply it. Um, but I do think it gives us the latitude where we can have prayer at our event. Um, I think that's an important consideration. And I reserve my rest of my comments. I was interested to 
think about what you guys, what you know, what's the opinion of the rest of you all on it? I'm, I'm very interested in prayer, and I think we need it. And our superintendent, he could uh, call and talk with the American Center of Law and Justice. It's been, I think, handling this issue somewhere up in New York or wherever. And uh, let them do a little bit. And that probably won't cost us anything. We don't have to go through our lawyer. Uh, and get their input of what we can do and what we can't do. But uh, I, I, I really think we need prayer uh, uh, in this board. But anybody want that, uh, you want that name, and you got it, Dr. Picker? American Center of Law and Justice? Yes. Dr. Bowles does make an excellent point, though, in that finally page. Um, but finally, in the, sen in the sentence of the paragraph, finally, the makeup of the audience is important. And we do have those kids coming in, and I think that is important to consider because we don't want to run the risk of, you know, making it symbolize coercion or anything like that. Um, but, I mean, I think there are some, perhaps some ways around that. I'm just being, trying to be creative here. Maybe bring them in after we were to do the prayer. Um, I don't know. I don't know how you guys feel about that, but. If, if we were really serious about implementing it, um, that could be a, a way around it, so to speak, because that is the risk we're going to run. If we have children in there, um, we would probably incur some kind of lawsuit or something with somebody thinking that's going to be coercion or something like that. I think we'd have to have a majority of the board right. and agree with the proceeding further. Things like change from what we're doing right now. So uh, I think people ought to speak their piece. I agree with Mr. Blanton, we need prayer, but I also know that we don't need a lawsuit, you know, so, so we, we can't do something that, that's, that's incompatible there. Um, I, I read what our attorney wrote, and I went online and got the Supreme Court decision and, and read that decision. Um, some of the words I didn't understand, most of them did. I can read the King's English even though I, I didn't go to law school. And it, it, it gave a lot of guidance of, of, of what you ought to do and, and what you can do and what you can't do and that sort of thing. Um, the, the pastor can't tell the audience, uh, would you please bow with me, because that's a, that's a type of coercion and that kind of thing. But in, in, the, in the final analysis, the town of Greece was a different kind of body. It was a, it was a, a city council versus a school board, and there was a, 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 a concurrent decision that was written in there as well that sort of touched on it a little bit, but the bottom line is we've not gotten clear instruction from the Supreme Court, so you know, we, 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 want to be, we want to be people of faith, but at the same time we got to recognize that other folks are of different place and, and we're a public school. One of the things that I thought was important was not necessarily the last paragraph in that section from our attorney, but the last paragraph in the entire document. And he said, should a board choose to have prayers at the start of school board members, we recommend strict adherence to the town of Greece as described, a particular uh, board that you should not attempt to control the contents of the prayer. And then he goes on to say, from a constitutional perspective, until the U.S. Supreme Court or the Fourth Circuit Court uh, provides a decision on this issue, the safest means is a moment of silence in which individuals may choose to pray silently or choose not to. That's sort of been a standard in schools for many, many years, that, that you have a moment of silence, that people of faith can have a prayer, people that are not of faith can think about their date next Saturday night, whatever, that's, that's, that's between them and the Lord. And uh, that's, that may be a reasonable thing for us to do if, if, if we're going to do something, to have that moment of silence where folks can choose to pray or, or, or choose not to. Uh, it seems to me that would alleviate any danger of, first of all, of, of offending somebody or in, Reportedly, not getting us into a lawsuit that we really don't need. Uh, we need prayer, but we don't need lawsuits. Let somebody else do it first. Right? Yeah, let somebody else do it first. Somebody's, I, I got, somebody's I, got more money than us. I guess I agree because we definitely need prayer. And I, I am going to make an assumption, which I know is not safe to make assumptions, but I think just knowing the individuals on this board, I think we all pray. And we pray 
before we come to the meetings and we probably say some prayers during the meetings too and so I, I definitely um, feel that prayer is, is important and, and it's certainly needed um, and as I was reading through this I was like Mr. Harris when I got down to the bottom that's what really jumped out at me I, 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 and I have heard you know this on the news and everything the Supreme Court hasn't done us any favors I mean that if they would either just come right out and say yes it's perfectly fine or if they would say no then we would know which way to go but they're leaving us in the in the gray area and um, and and we certainly don't while I kind of doubt that anyone in Cleveland County would file that first lawsuit um, it all it takes is someone who is searching for school boards that decide to go this way and they they find somebody here that will join them in a lawsuit and they file that and we, we don't need to, to spend any more money on attorneys to help get us through that one way or the other and um, if, if if the board wants to go with with a moment of silence I certainly have no, no problems with that but I think until until the law is a little bit clearer letting us know which way to go I, I don't think it would be in the best interest of the school system to um, to have a, an open open prayer at our school board meetings and I'm not sure Tony, how we would keep the kids out I mean especially our pledge leaders because you typically in a lot of settings you say the pledge first and then you have a, a, an open prayer and invitation or something and I don't know that we would you know, logistically be able to do that, but um, but I think that again, if, if, if the board wants to go with a moment of silence, I could I could do that. But. I agree with you completely, with sure. I think they're talking about ceremonial prayer uh, being part of the ceremony, uh, and I think I'm like us like here. I think uh, there's a uh, our board members are a group of people that I found that spend time in prayer uh, at home uh, with their families. Um, we can go through a ceremony. We can go through uh, doing this publicly, but uh, if we do this, we are very likely to end up uh, with a very, very expensive lawsuit because there are people out there trolling for one. Uh, they just want somebody to do it so they can sue us. Uh, and I really don't like paying lawyers. Uh, even though I've got a few in the family, <laughs> I just don't like spending school system money. We're, we need to spend on educating kids, not paying lawyers. And uh, I would rather at this point sit back and, and as Donnie mentioned, let somebody else get sued uh, and let the Supreme Court make a little clearer decision about what we can and cannot do. Uh, before we do it, and I agree, it would be hard. It, it is problematic with kids being present. I want our kids at our board meetings. One option would just simply say, "No more kids come to our board meetings." We don't have kids leading the prayer. We, I mean, leading the pledge. We don't have the seniors coming, and then we could probably implement this. Okay, but uh, if we have kids, and then you have kids come to our meeting, and the Supreme Court is concerned about the coercion with the presence of these young children. Um, then we probably got a problem. And so I, I choose to have the kids at the meeting, and if that means we don't have a, a formal prayer fine, a, a moment of silence so certainly a, a would be one option. Uh, I don't have a problem with that. Um, but like I said, I really think prayers need to be done at home. We need, all need to be prayer. I think we all are. Uh, certainly when the meeting is held in, uh, most of our meetings are held at night, We've had plenty of time to pray all day long, and uh, some of us do. And uh, that, to me, would be the safest approach for our board as we're looking at the, uh, what it would cost to implement this policy. I, I, I don't disagree with anything anybody said. I guess if we did a moment of silence, we would have to rework our policy on, on that particular thing, or I don't think there's anything. Inherently problematic about the moment of silence. It's not, it's not presenting a particular ideology or theology. It's 
not we do that in schools, it's not forced in children's schools, we do it at athletic events, it's not forced. It has the courts have ruled it to be forced there. You know, he's uh, Jonathan has quoted some court cases that are the landmark cases on the side. I'll take it at that next meeting. I think that's the safest way. I, mean, I don't want to be caught up in lawsuits and get that attention from our school system. Well, I don't need no lawsuit, but why do we have any other events then that we have and then children that in? We're not supposed to. Not supposed to. Oh. What events? You said other events. Uh, at graduation, uh, uh, at that dinner we had when we give scholarships out. Uh, they had prior to that, and uh, that's, that's, that's related to school. Uh, what's the difference between that and us sitting right here? The graduation that you're referring to, I believe, was at first. That was the only one where a prayer was given. Uh, I, I was at the LeGrand Center, and they had one there. The um, student. Student-led prayer has generally been the uh, permissible student-led prayer. And, and uh, typically, we'll give children some option that that what is valedictorian, salutatorian. Those people who do that, class president, give them some option about that. Well, is that could, could that be a lawsuit then? Anything we do today, this day, it's possible. Okay. Okay. You know, I mean, you understand that. So, I mean, uh, we run the risk just opening the doors on lawsuits. But it's, it's an issue. So, where's we? Um, if we did invite students to do prayer, that probably would open up the door. It was kind of like a student led. Like we had a student on on the gamut for every meeting for the rest of the year. We kind of made a schedule. Would that run the risk of putting us in some hot water? I never, I never, I wasn't considering students doing prayer. And I just thought about that when he said, I, I don't know if, I, that, that, if the students let open the meeting. I don't think you need to get your friends. You know, that I, I wouldn't want to reach in the direction on that. That would seem to be more problematic than. Inviting their law or somebody to do the right. Yeah. I would think. Richard, Well, um, I do have a personal uh, preference, you know, for prayer. Uh, however, I, I'll, I do also share constitutional concerns, you know, with uh, with trying to do that. In in in, in, in addition to that. Where it may be ceremonial. Uh, I, I think that the true standard and measure of whether we pray or not is manifested by our conduct, our behavior, our actions, our practice. That determines, you know, our faith more than a ceremonial kind of event, you know, to do that. If you can be ceremonial in the meeting and uh, certainly the opposite before and after the meeting. Uh, so, uh, so again, I, I base you know my standards on our practice and our conduct and our behavior uh, as expressed in First Timothy, but I'm not going to go there. But uh, I do have some constitutional concerns, and so because of that, perhaps the middle ground would be a moment of silence, perhaps. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. I, uh, Occur with the moment of silence. Uh, if we're going to do anything for the reasons everybody's so stated, right? Other, I believe uh, Danny, you and Sheriff so spoken, but everybody else has. So if anybody has any more comments, say something. If not, do I hear that we would like to implement a moment of silence at the next meeting, which would be the 21st of July? Chair, I move that we schedule a moment of silence. Well, I don't think we can't do it. Hold on, I'm sorry. And I'm sorry, Bruce is sort of already yeah. said yeah. Yeah. That, uh, that we don't need a policy. So yeah, I think the policy is allowing you to do that. That may be moving that direction as the Supreme Court clarifies this more and the courts clarify more. Uh, you can move in that direction. Seems like that's consensus right here to varying degrees of everybody. 